I'm gonna start working on my next marble machine. It's gonna be really small and inside of this face. Now it's gonna be a challenge because this face is only about 10 inches tall and just under six inches in diameter. So everything has to be really compact. That's why I'm gonna use some of the stuff that I already got. Now, don't even know. Okay, so I have this motor. It's a geared motor. It's gonna be really small. Um, and I also have these pulleys that will connect the motor to the lift. And I also have a battery pack, so that way the whole thing will be self-sustaining. The batteries will be inside, there'll be a switch on the top, so we just flip the switch and the whole thing runs on its own, doesn't need to be plugged into a wall or anything like that. Um, I'll put links to all the things that I got down below if you want to try to build one yourself. Now the first thing I have to do is make an adapter for the motor to fit into the first pulley because the motor has a 3mm diameter shaft and the hole for this is 6mm. Since I don't have a sleeve, I'll have to make my own. So that's what I'm going to do first. At first, I tried making a sleeve out of wood, but that didn't work out, so I switched to a different method. I cut up some soldering wire into smaller pieces and placed them into the pulley, followed by the motor shaft and more wire. Because of the thickness of the soldering wire, it held the motor shaft right in the center. I then used a soldering iron to connect all the pieces together. The combination of the wires and the set screws help keep the motor shaft in place. When the motor is running, you can see that the gear is pretty much stationary. A tiny wobble will have no effect on the performance of the pulley. Next, I started working on the motor mount. There are two small screw holes on the motor to help mount it. It required two millimeter sized screws. I thought that having a thin piece of metal as one of the layers would help the motor mount be more solid, but it ended up amplifying the vibration noises from the motor, so that idea eventually got nixed. Using some calipers, I did a test measure of the screw in the hole that came out to 0.31 inches, so I started with a quarter inch thick plywood. I notched out a small sliver and marked the spot for the screw holes. Of course, with tiny screws, you have to have tiny washers. I did a test fit with the screws, motor, and the soon to disappear tin sheet. It was pretty secure, but the quarter inch ply wasn't thick enough, so I added another eighth inch piece to make the motor mount 3 eighth inches thick. The quarter inch piece will hold a bearing, so I cut out the hole for it, starting with smaller bits and progressing to larger sizes. Oops. The bearing is a bit more than a half inch, so I used a Dremel to sand off the perfect amount to have a snug fit. The hole for the eighth inch piece just needed to be slightly larger than the bearing hole. After trimming the two pieces down, I glued them together and was sure to take out the bearing so no wood glue would ruin it. I used small nails to keep the motor screw holes lined up correctly. Next, I started working on the lift shaft. I started with a small drill bit and rotated the shaft while drilling so it would be completely vertical. Then. I slowly worked up to a quarter inch diameter bit, the correct size for the bearing and pulley. With a quarter inch dowel snug in the hole, I tested all the parts to make sure they fit just right, and then trimmed the dowel. Then I could properly mount the motor and do another test with the entire pulley system. This is it working upside down, but it works nonetheless. 
The next thing to work on is the base of the machine. Using a quarter inch sheet of plywood, I traced the outside of the vase and used a compass to bring it down to the inner diameter. I also found that the vase is not perfectly cylindrical. It has a slight oval shape to it. The first cut was still a bit too big. I also found that the bottom of the vase isn't perfectly flat. One side sits a bit higher than the other. It's not a huge difference, but it's something to keep in mind. Next, I added stilts to hold the motor mount above the base. I kept only a small clearance underneath the pulleys to not waste more vertical space than necessary. While that was drying, I started working on the actual lift shaft. It'll work like a corkscrew, where as the shaft rotates, the marbles will be lifted to the top. I measured out much more wire than needed at the start. The wire I'm using is a metal core with a squishy plastic outer shell that is meant for outdoor use. I drilled a hole at the base big enough for only the metal core and used that as the starting point to start wrapping the wire. The first wrap is around the bottom and then I started working upwards, leaving enough space in between wires so that the marbles won't be touching as they get lifted. When I got to the top, I cut off the excess wire. The shaft is still too high for the vase so I marked and cut the wood without cutting the wire. I drilled a hole for the end, then cut the wire and finagled it into the hole. Since the wire core is thin, it's much easier to work with than if it were a thicker wire. I then spray painted it gold. I'm really happy with how it turned out. The spaces between the wraps are nearly equal for doing it by hand, and it's going to leave plenty of vertical distance for tracks. Next, I glued in the motor mount while it was in the vase. Then, I started working on the wiring. Depending on which way the wires are connected, the motor can spin in either direction. This is important to get right so the lift actually lifts the marbles. After mounting all the mechanical parts, I ran a test. As anticipated, the top of the lift shaft swings around, so that'll have to be secured. But it's looking good so far. I added in dowels that will connect the bottom to the top, and cut out a circle for the top the same diameter as the base. Then, I marked all the spots where the pillars were, and marked the cut lines on the top. There wasn't really a rhyme or reason to the design on the top other than to connect the pillars and make it structurally secure. I put a hole in each of the sections and then used a scroll saw to carefully cut along the lines. I put a hole in the top of the shaft and the top piece for the guide dowel. I then glued down the top. While that was drying, I finished the wiring. The circuit for this machine is really simple. The battery pack holds four AA batteries in series and turns out six volts in total. The current follows a wire to the motor, giving it enough power to work. Then, it follows up a wire to the on-off switch at the top of the machine, and from the on-off switch back down to the battery pack. When the switch is turned on, the circuit is complete and the batteries are allowed to power the motor. Again, this is a very simple circuit to set up because there's only three elements and very low voltage. Once all that was set up and running, I added in the guide dowel for the lift shaft, gluing it to the shaft and not the top. The next thing I worked on was the marble guides. These are vertical pieces set up in a triangle formation with the corkscrew that keep the marbles in place on the lift. The first one is closer to the lift and keeps the marbles from rolling away. The second one is slightly further away. It's spaced so the marbles can enter the lift but fall into the triangle 
and have to ride the lift up. In order for the marbles to exit the lift, I needed to sand a hole for them in the first vertical piece. When I made the hole big enough, the marbles could exit but didn't want to. So I added a slightly angled piece to the top that would force the marbles out when they got there. Alright, that's it for part one. I'm really happy with what I have so far. The whole thing comes in and out really easily so I can work on it. The lift is working great and uh, I'll clean up the wiring as I go and the next thing I'm going to work on is the track. I was thinking about doing multiple tracks through the whole thing, but since it's really small and confined, I think I may only do one. We'll see what happens. Alright, that's it for now. See ya.